Hello and welcome to a start of another reading vlog. Um, I decided to try the Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. I don't think I've ever done a vlog before where it's all romance reads, but I'm definitely in the mood right now. I've just read some, you know, kind of heavy things recently and I just want to dive into some romance. I think it'd be really great. So I am already 35% into The Duchess Deal, which is the first book in the Girl Meets Duke series, where we follow the Duke of Ashbury and Emma Gladstone. Um, the Duke has just come back from war. He had an engagement broken off and his fiance left him because he came back um, and what they all consider horribly disfigured from this war so now she no longer wants to marry him. Emma comes into his life in the dress his fiance had commissioned from her. She's a dressmaker and she's looking for payment because she was paid I think for the materials but not for her labor and now that the wedding is canceled like she, the fiance is not you know providing any funds so she shows up to the duke and is like listen bud. I spent so many hours making this dress for your future bride only for her to disappear. Pay me. What does he say? Well, I could pay you for it or we could get married, we can have a baby and that'll be the scope of our relationship. Like we're not friends, we're not lovers, you know, whatever. Like I come to your room at night, we do the do. Hopefully you produce an heir for me and then we both move on. Uh, you know, maybe you go live in a country house or whatever. She agrees. But she puts in her own counter, um, not counter bet, what's the word, like, uh, a counter argument of she wants him to have dinner every night. She wants him to sit down and speak to each other at dinner, maybe in hopes that they fall in love, maybe so she doesn't feel like, you know, a woman of the night, if you will. Um, so I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, he seems like... He's only got that hardened exterior because he's, you know, come back from war and seen whatever he's seen and he no longer feels like a, you know, handsome man deserving of being a duke because he has been scarred in the war. Um, so I'm interested to see how this goes. I often struggle with reading historical romances just because, like, I don't know, I'm a feminist. It's hard for me to look back at women who just had really no options um, and did what they can do. And so I really enjoy um, historical romances that take uh, female characters and have them kind of rebel against the social norms and kind of work through that. And I guess you could say she is since she was already working. I think she's a vicar's daughter. Um, so she already is kind of doing things a little different, although that was kind of normal for someone of her station, if you will. So we'll see how it goes and I will update you soon. Okay, so I am almost done with the Duchess deal and I'm enjoying this so much. Um, I don't know what it is about Emma and her persistence with this man, but it is working. She is cracking him like a walnut. Let's talk about it. His ex, garbage, basura, trash, mm, throw her away. Get out of here, get out of here. But I will say, I love a dramatic ass intermission at the theater scene. It is hard enough getting these men out of their mansions, out for a night on, you know, a, a night on the town. And he's the one who's like, hey, we should go to the theater tonight. We should go do a thing because she just got done begging him to leave the house. She didn't even say they had to be seen because, you know, he was in the war was all horribly disfigured, so they say. I think he had like third degree burns or something, something happened. And I remember them describing like shrapnel, but there's never any clear description of what happened. And honestly, who cares? Like, he's a functional, uh, no, functional is the wrong word. Um, he's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It started with an F and now I can't think of it. He's a human being who's alive and deserving of love. That's it, that's it, that's the tweet. Full stop. Anyway, this is great. Um, she's, you know, cracking him down, getting him to understand that, like, not only does she not care that he was wounded in battle, it's a turn-on for her. Is that weird? I don't know. But it is what it is. So um, we are having some open door moments. Um, <clears throat> a lack of control in a moment, but, like, in a tasteful way, you know, in a very, like, husband and wife like he's like oh i'm gonna give it to you like don't ask me twice i'm gonna give it to you this is what's happening so uh if that's not your thing you might want to you know skip 
a good 45 to minute and 30 seconds in the audiobook and i know i assume that's two pages on the book but uh it's, it's a little spicy in here miss tessa it's a little spicy um but you know what i have an hour and 19 minutes left and um you know, we're just sitting here surviving the tornado warnings in Texas. There's a little circulation going on down the street. So while I um, shuffle my dog into the bathroom for some more hunker down time, I'm going to finish this audio. Look at this cover. Like, normally I don't enjoy these like Regency covers. Ooh, come back. Normally these aren't my thing, right? Normally I don't love these. Look at her. Look at that cover. Oh, give it to me. Give me more of that. So, I'll be back when I finish this, and uh, I likely will promptly start the next one because I already have books two, three, and I think four are queued up here in Libby. So, we're about to have a good time. Well, hello. Welcome to uh, my desk with me and my glare-filled glasses. I am making a thumbnail for another video, and I just finished, um, you know what, what's the name of the book I just finished? The Duchess Deal. I almost said um, Girl Meets Duke, but that's the name of the series. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think I'm going to give it three and a half stars. It was a great strong start to the series, but I don't know if it's going to be, you know, a fave or anything. Um, the star rating might change. And I say that because with romance series like this, I often find that because the stories are all in the same, like, friend group or family um that you follow along that sometimes your pull to a couple gets stronger as the books go on so maybe you know later i'll be a higher rating but right for right now it's three and a half stars um, i really enjoyed it and i just finished it so i'm going to start the governor's game which is book two um which follows i think what was her name alexandra mountbatten she was one of emma's friends um in the first book and it says that after her livelihood slips through her fingers, Alexandria Mountbatten takes on an impossible post, transforming a pair of wild orphans into proper young ladies. However, the girls don't need discipline. They need a loving home. Try telling that to their guardian, Chase Renaud. Duke's heir in the streets and devil in the sheets. Ew. <laughs> the ladies of London have tried and failed to make him settle down. Somehow, Alexandria must reach his heart without risking her own. Hmm, okay. So, I think this is definitely one of those, like, he's a rake, she's a girl below his station situations. And he actually popped up in the first book. Um, the women were all in a bookstore together, and he comes in and he's like, I'm looking for books for two little girls, and all of the books in his hands were about, like, fairies or something. And she was so tongue-tied, she couldn't even speak to him. So I'm interested to see how she gets the post as their, au oh, pair is the wrong word. I guess their governess because it's called the governor's game. Um, I'm interested to see how she gets that job and how this progresses. So um, I'm going to get started on reading this and I'll try to update y'all. I don't know if I'll do the halfway mark or maybe the quarter mark. I think it really just depends on how the story flows because I don't want to get too far into it without updating you. But I'll let you know how it goes. Hello, welcome back for another update. I am in the midst of the governor's game. I am 45% in. Um, we're loving the vibes. We're loving the chemistry. The only thing is like, I know part of this is the issue just because it's a regency, but there's no like build up. They just instantly have chemistry and maybe it's just sexual attraction. Maybe chemistry is the wrong word. And maybe that's part of my problem is that I need to think of it as just general attraction and not chemistry because those are two different things um but let's say the vibes are vibing we are here we are having a good old sexy time we've had many a moments of them already being pressed up against each other for whatever reason these children are terrorizing them in all the best ways i'm very here for the shenanigans from the children they've already tied them up um i tried to leave them well on an outing like i don't know these kids are fun um so we'll see where this goes. It's kind of weird because I don't want to say that there's no storyline, but the storyline initially is that she's supposed to come be the governess for these girls, get them ready for school because it seems like they've never had like quote unquote proper schooling, but they've had one moment of her doing that. She was like playing some pirate game with them and teaching them French at the same time, which that sounds fun to me. I'm down. Um, 
And he interrupts that and is like mad at her for letting them be pirates or whatever, not little ladies. Um, so I don't know if this is really, I feel like this is one of those books where you have these like fun interlude moments before you have the fun interlude moments, if you know what I mean. And uh, this seems like it's going to be an open door situation. I don't know that Tessa Dare ever does fade to black or uh, closed door. So I'm 45% of the way in. You might get one more update before I finish. We'll see. But so far, um, light on the plot. Mm, small to medium on the smut. We're not really there yet, but you can tell like it's coming and there's not... Um, any like she's not like being demure about her or anything it's just that there actually is a little bit of a build-up which I appreciate versus it just being like it's just happening especially for the time frame that they're in it just wouldn't make any sense for you know us five pages into the book to just you know be in the sheets so appreciate that um so we'll see how this goes and I will have an update here for you either when I'm done or maybe around the 80% mark it really just depends on if there's plot or not because if not like I'm not going to come here to explain every smut scene that happened. So, um, this is fine. Um, I can see why people enjoy Tessa Dare in general. Um, I think this is one of her older series. I'd have to look it up on Goodreads to double check, but you can definitely see the groundwork for a lot of the Regency romance that has like feminist angles to it that we enjoy today from like, I, I don't want to say modern authors because Tessa Dare is very much a modern author, but in, in current works, we'll say. Because I bet if I were to read a Tessa Dare that came out, you know, last year, it would probably have a little bit different vibe than this currently. But you can definitely see the foundation and the groundwork. And although I'm not like, this isn't like going to be an all-time fave, I definitely really appreciate reading books that, you know, set the, they set the tone for the books that I love now. So that's what I have to say on that. <laughs> Okay, so I know I film every clip like this in this vlog, and uh, I seem to just always be wearing a black shirt and these glasses, but it is a different day. It is Sunday, March 27th, and I never updated you midweek when I finished the Governess game. Um, for a book that seemingly had, like, very little character development and, well, I say very little, one person had some character development and just, like, minimal plot, I really enjoyed it, and so far it's my favorite of the series. Granted, I've only read two books, and I need to start the third one, but I really enjoyed, um, I enjoyed the story. So, and I think part of it, too, of the reason I enjoyed it is because I realized that I just sometimes have very unrealistic expectations of what a book can or should do, and I think it was really nice to experience a book that kind of gave us a snapshot of these people's lives without giving us, like, what realistically would take, you know, five years of knowing someone, but in, you know, a month and a half and 320 pages. Um, and I appreciated that it just felt like we got the appropriate amount of story for the shortened timeline. So yeah, I think I'm going to give that one, I think I gave it three stars on Goodreads, but it's like a three and a half. Maybe I'll change it to four because I really did enjoy it. Um, I liked the way that the Dukes... Um, His realization of his own self-worth and lack of blame for a scenario that happened years ago. I shouldn't say lack of blame. But, like, the blame he puts on himself and the others kind of put on him but aren't realistic, I think. Um, I enjoyed that part of the story. I also loved the way that they loved um, on the girls that were in his care. You don't really know if they're, like his dad's illegitimate children or like other family relations he says that they were just kind of bounced around family to family and that he was the one that finally kept them and i liked that he was open about his struggles to give himself to that process which is why he was so keen on hiring a governess and, and kind of keeping them at arm's length because of what had happened with his other uh i guess his cousin um earlier in the book um but i really did appreciate the way he opened himself up to them more so towards the end, but it wasn't like this massive 180 where you just felt, where it didn't, it just didn't feel unrealistic. So that's what I have to say on that. I wish I had more to say, but when I tell you that everything I've told you in this vlog is basically what happened in the book and me trying not to give spoilers, um, I will say that what carried these books was the smut scenes. Um, I needed some ice water after that library scene. Um, if you know, you know. The girls who get it, get it. 
and um yeah so we'll see what happens with the wallflower wager is what i have up next i read the first chapter apparently earlier this week i'm going to go back and start it over because i don't remember what i read um but hopefully i'll get all that done today i would like to get this returned it says that someone's waiting on it. I hate that Libby kind of tells you that, if I'm being honest. I have other books where it says four people are waiting. Four people are waiting. One person waiting. And that just makes me feel bad. <laughs> um, and I'm not like a person who like hoards my library loans, but at least give me a few days to start. Like, don't tell me immediately. <laughs> so, um, I am going to go take a shower because I was just at a friend's house and they had a campfire going despite it being 90 degrees. And my hair smells gross and I hate that. And I'm also a little sweaty, so... I'm going to go take care of that, listen to this audiobook while I deep condition my hair, and hopefully I'll have an update for you guys around the 50% mark, unless, unlike the first two, this one has a stronger plot and there's more to talk about, then I'll see you sooner. So, I'll talk to you soon. Hello, I am back, I am showered, and I'm 49% into the Wallflower Wager, and if this keeps going the way it's going, it's going to be my favorite of the series. Um, we have plot, we have intrigue, we have some some very steamy scenes. Um, I don't think I told you what this one was about. So um, this one is about uh, Lady Penny. So this is the only one I think so far where the woman has been um, like a woman of society in the same way that like the Duke is. Um, so it's about Lady Penny who is eccentric to say the least. She's considered a She's considered a wallflower, I guess, but she doesn't really get invited to things because she's the strange girl on the block with a goat that she walks every day and a bunch of chickens and cats. But she's in London. It's not like she's in the country. So everyone looks at her like kind of strange. They don't invite her to things. And her brother, who lives out in the country, is basically telling her, hey, like, I want you to come join me next month and because of the time she's a woman she has no choice because she's not married her aunt who i wouldn't call her a chaperone because uh i think penny's supposed to be like 25 or 26 but her aunt lives in the city and kind of looks after her um in the way her brother thinks that she should be looked after and she bargains with her aunt and says hey if i can become like a society woman and you know prove that i deserve to stay here will you go to my brother and say like hey like she's doing great let her stay and so she has to get rid of all of her animals. She has to like go out and be in the society papers and do some other things. And her next door neighbor, Gabriel Duke, has moved in um, to refinish the house next to hers. And um, he's a self-made man. Kind of like, um, oh, what was that one man's name in the Ravenel series? I forget his name, but he had that department store. He's kind of like him, except I think this guy pretty much almost exclusively does real estate. And he is saying, like, anyone would kill to live in a home next to, you know, a lady or a duke or whoever. So I'm going to finish this house and sell it. Well, she tells him, because he's like, you need to get rid of all your animals. It's bringing the neighborhood value down, essentially. And she's like, well, you're going to have your wish, because not only are the animals going to be gone, but I'm going to be gone too if I don't get this done. So now he's helping her. <laughs> and then all of her friends, who are the two married couples from the last two books, um are also trying to help and it's it's a good time we've already had a forced proximity situation i wouldn't call it a one bed situation because technically she had her own room but she ended up uh gliding on top of him for a little bit so uh already getting pretty steamy so we'll see what happens i like i said have 51 percent left which libby tells me if I read at the time frame in which I'm reading, I'm on track to finish in 2 hours and 53 minutes. So, I'm going to try to do that. In fact, actually, I'm still listening at 1.5 speed. And I normally listen at 2 to 2.25. So, I'm going to up the speed. Um, I had it turned down because when I was showering, I had my Bluetooth speaker going. And I don't know about y'all, but like I can listen to an audiobook with no headphones at like whatever speed I'm listening to it at. But there's something about it being over the Bluetooth speaker while the shower is running. I have to turn it down to 1.5. I don't know why. This is what it is. Thought I'd share that. So I'm going to read that. Keep reading this. Walk my dog. Get some dinner. And hopefully be finished after that. And let you know what's up. So I'll talk to y'all soon. Hello. I finished the Wallflower Wager. 
Um, it was really good. This is my favorite so far of the series. I think there's one more book, but it says it doesn't come out until 2023, but when I was Googling, it says that there's 2022 release dates for it, so we'll see what happens, but um, I'm definitely going to end the video here because I'm not going to wait months for a book to come out to finish this video because that's just... It's just dumb to me. I don't know. I mean, it works for the people. I, when I get an idea for a video, I just need to do it and get it up on the internet. Otherwise, it's not happening. So, um, the last 50% of this book was action packed. Um, big old trigger warnings for, um, abuse of a minor and like the recountant of prior sexual abuse i was not expecting that at all did not see that coming didn't see that in any of the reviews i had seen for the book prior to this i probably should have checked the story graph but that's okay it's not really triggering to me but it just would have been nice to know because it kind of felt like it came out of nowhere there was no mention of it until literally i think like the 60 or 75 percent mark so it was just kind of like you're dawdling along in the store thinking it's about one thing and then bam, there's this other thing. Um, but it was handled really well. There's definitely a good for her moment for it in the end, which we love those. We love women getting their vindication. Absolutely love it. And let me tell you, Penny got hers, okay? Penny got hers. So if you love a good for her story and like the content doesn't bother you too much, um, I would definitely recommend picking this up. This is The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. And honestly, if you're the kind of person that like doesn't care about reading books in order, I would read this. Honestly, I don't want to say skip the first book because I understand why it exists and it was fun and it's a good first book to the series. But books two and three were so much better and book three is by far my favorite. Um, so if you're a fan of historical romances or if you're trying to get into them for the first time, honestly, I think book three is a great introduction into that. I was trying to debating, I was like, is book two better? But I think book three is great because I know for a lot of people who enjoy contemporary romances, they struggle with um, the time period of historicals and um, sometimes feeling like the lack of feminism for women. But I think that book three um, is able to uh, surpass some of those obstacles. So... Um, with that, I think I'm going to give the whole series a three and a half. Individually, I gave the first book a three, the second book a three and a half or four, and this one I'm going to give a four and a half. The only reason I'm docking it at that half star is because of, like I said, the sudden um, onset of that story. Um, and it was because it went from, like, she sitting down and, like, trying to tell him something serious and you think it's going to be about, I don't know, the animals or something, because that's what most of the books been about, or maybe one of her traumatic stories of being out in society before. Um, but no, it's about her dad's, not best friend, but cause I don't know. I feel like they didn't have best friends at this time. But man, it was close to her father uh, being an absolute piece of shit. So that was a surprise none of us wanted or needed. Um, but it did set up the rest of the book. But again, it just felt... It felt like an editor said, hey, this is lacking. I need you to beef it up. And she was just like, okay, sexual assault. Let's beef it up with that. And you're like, uh, it's the only reason, the only reason it didn't get a three is because she handled it really well. She handled it really well. And the hero yeah, uses a lot of, um, I also uses a lot of consent after that, but given the time period and the nature of their relationship or the fact that he's supposed to be this brute, the fact that he even was able to use consent after that and the way that he, like... I don't want to say he takes care of her in that moment. I mean, he does. He shows her some really great care in that moment. Um, particularly, that does so well. He just does so well with that. So, um, four and a half stars for this book. Definitely recommend. It's a good time. And with that, I'll see you guys soon with another video.